there are a lot of great theme parks out there, but there are a lot of them that could also be doing things better. Here are seven things that I wish every park would do that would help make them great. Not quite perfect, but close to it. And which ones that some parks aren't. So I was thinking about my series that I had done on the perfect theme park, the ideal theme park. And I was thinking a little bit back to the current theme parks, both as a former employee and as a guest. And it kind of came up with this idea that there are six things really that I wish theme parks and amusement parks would do that would help push all of them towards the ideal or perfect park. Each of these six things are things that Many of the parks are missing one or two things on the list that keep them from quite hitting that. Although there are some parks that are pretty much nailing each one of these. So the first thing on my list that's become really kind of apparent recently, a lot of parks need to be more diligent about people taking their phones on roller coasters. I have seen news articles um, at least three news articles and two videos in the last two months of people that have been hit by cell phones on roller coasters. There's this idea that, hey, I got to get live video on a roller coaster. And we're getting to a point where it's happening so often that something needs to be done safety wise, not just tell people no loose objects because they're not paying attention. One of these was even on Iron Gwazi at Bush Gardens. Iron Gwazi actually has pouches to secure your phone in that you can't quite reach during the ride. And yet somebody got hit by a phone there because they didn't put it in the pouch. Are we at a point where we've got to do metal detectors on all of these rides? I hated them on Hulk at Universal, hated it. But my goodness, do we have to do this? Are people not going to get the point until maybe we start prosecuting criminal charges for assault? Because of, you know, assault by deadly cell phone. But people aren't paying attention. What do we have to do to get people to stop pulling their phones out on rides and stop losing them and stop injuring people? Because it's getting too much. And I'm not even GoPros. I have I have a GoPro. People are like, why don't you film on rides? Okay, I'll film on a dark ride or something, but I won't do it on coasters because it's dangerous. Even if I'm using a strapped on camera, I don't want people seeing my video footage and then going, oh, Sir Willow can do it, therefore I can. And they're holding their phone. Even though I can film on the coasters with secured on equipment that isn't going to go anywhere, I won't. <laughs> I'm not going to risk losing my gear or my money, and I don't want to set an example for others. It's something that needs to be dealt with. Now, there is actually a way, though, that the parks can also deal with this besides just banning them, and that's doing more on-ride footage. Many rides, especially coasters, have a picture, but there are actually some out there that will film video of you on the ride. Dollywood is a good example. Cedar Point has a coaster that they do this on. It is possible. Now, it's expensive to fit the equipment in there. But even if they were doing just off-ride cameras, kind of like Disney does with some of theirs, such as Seven Dwarves Mine Train and a couple others, they could fill that gap and people wouldn't feel as much of a need to film on the ride. Let's be much more diligent about not letting these things on the rides and then let's provide some alternatives and hey if the parks do it right they can make some money on it too number two remember the theming one of the big things about going to an amusement or theme park is the fact that you're getting out of normal and into someplace else i know that there's a lot of parks like cedar point that really isn't a theme park it's an amusement park but it has some themed areas. Most parks have an area that's themed or at least a general overall kind of theme. Even if it's just plain old Victorian architecture, which you find at a lot of the parks or some sort of consistent architecture. Uh, if you go to Knobles, for example, it has a very consistent feel and look throughout the whole park. 
so that you know that you are someplace special and unique, not just down the block from your house. Although if a park is just down the block from your house, that would be kind of cool, but you get the idea. If you're going to do theming, do it right and do it consistently. Don't have one themed ride in the middle of a non-themed area. That looks stupid. <laughs> it's dumb. Do it consistently. Six Flags, for example, is known for going cheap on the theme. Hey, look, we've got the county fair area, and here in the middle of it is Batman the Ride. What? How does that work? Or if they do a DC themed area, it's like plywood cutouts and stuff. Do the theming and do it right. Do, spend the little bit of money to invest in it and make it come alive. It's going to pay off in the end in the experience and it's going to draw more people. If you just go cheap on the theming, please don't bother. <laughs> a good example of this uh, is the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. Now, if you look at the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk, there isn't a themed area at all. They've got a haunted house, but there's nothing else themed around it. You've got the cave train. There's no other cavemen kind of thing around it. But the whole area has a very consistent feel with the architecture and just the way it's all designed. It's not a theme park, but it has a consistent theme and feel to it that ties it all together. And then, of course, when you get areas, you know, parks like Universal Studios, Islands of Adventure in particular, and the Disney parks, and several of those, you've got actual themed areas, and it's amazing when done well. Number three, balance the prices and costs and the crowds. This is a hard thing, and the parks almost can't win on this. The Disney parks, for example, right now, they're just overcrowded. They're just plain overcrowded. And they're already way up there in cost. How do you reduce crowds? You raise the cost. <laughs> it It's simple economics. And uh, it means people are going to complain, I can't afford Disney. It's out of the reach of the common person. Yeah, but there's way too many people there already. To quote Yogi Berra, nobody goes there anymore. It's too crowded. My feelings, put that cost up front. Put it on the gate charge. Let people be able to see it right at the beginning and budget accordingly. There is a practice going on right now with some of the parks where they keep jacking the food prices up. I mean, way up. You can't plan for that ahead of time because you can't see the food prices online. There's some of them now that are adding a surcharge onto the food cost. So not only are you paying the price on the menu, but then there's an extra charge on top of it that you didn't know about. Bush, I'm looking at you. This is deceitful, deceptive, and dishonest. The three Ds. I'm sorry, that's just low class. Let people be able to plan the cost. Hit them up front. Yes, I know food's going to be expensive because you essentially have a captive audience. But Bush has the most expensive food prices in the industry right now anyways, and they're adding on hidden charges. That's not cool. Help us out here. If we're budgeting for a vacation, we got to know what we are going to spend Let's see it up front and then decide, okay, look, I can't really afford a Disney vacation. Let's go someplace else that's going to be a little more uh, cost effective and do it in a way that balances out how many people come in the parks. Six Flags is, I, I think they're kind of missing this point. Six Flags has decided with their new CEO that they want to reduce crowd levels a little bit. So they've eliminated their cheap tickets, but they've almost gone too high. My goodness, I saw a parking th thing for one of the Six Flags parks that was $40 for parking. Excuse me? Um, that's like Disney levels. Six Flags, you ain't Disney. <laughs> that's nuts. Charging for parking is a whole nother deal anyways. But this is something that honestly, the parks need to work out such a way to get the crowd levels balanced. But also let the people coming to the park know what to expect to have to spend and not hide it in charges. I would honestly, and I know this isn't a popular opinion, I would rather have a higher gate charge up front that I can see, that I can plan for, that I can budget for, and lower crowds in the park than a lower cost and overcrowded. Number four, offer a variety of foods. This is something I, I don't understand with some parks. 
Okay, everybody's got the burgers, the chicken nuggets, the fries, the pizza, and uh, maybe tacos. You have parts that that's all they have. Um, guys, let me have a choice of something different. Give me some sandwiches. Okay, Cedar Fair, really? Just Subway? Let's take outside and throw it in. Oh, look, it's Subway. <sighs> Chinese food. Look, it's China Panda and Six Flags. Okay, I like having a variety of things. Let me try some new things. How about some sushi? How about some Italian food? When's the last time you saw something like spaghetti in a park? Every park, American park, should have a good barbecue place. Um, I'm surprised how many don't. But give me some other things to try. And especially if you've got a themed area, let's try to make the food fit the area that it's in. Uh, that's always kind of a nice deal if you can do that. But there's some parks out there that have some amazing food. Knoebels has a fantastic variety. You wouldn't really think that this little park in the woods does, but they've got a number of different things you can try. Disney is known for its variety, but again, that depends upon the park. You get to Disney's Hollywood Studios and there's not much of a variety there. They need to work on it. But too many parks get stuck in that rut let me have a variety of different things to try. Oh, and while you're at it, this is kind of a bonus. Remember allergies. My wife has such a hard time at some parks finding something to eat. Okay, yes, her allergies are a little different, but the number of parks that don't even think about gluten-free and celiac boggles my mind. Hey, guys, <laughs> this is a widely known deal anymore. Let's get with the program. How about vegetarian dishes? Okay, I'm not vegetarian. I don't know why more parks don't think about the number of vegetarians that are out there, though. Let's think about these specialized meals and have a list of ingredients. So if you run into somebody with an unusual allergy like my wife with the garlic and the tomatoes and peppers, there's so many times that we're like, we don't know if she can eat there or not. Or something simple like when you have french fries, don't cook them in the same fat as your chicken nuggets and stuff. Because then anybody who can't do gluten can't eat them. And you've just elim eliminated a whole big item. Think about allergies. Disney is still far and away the leader here. Some parks are catching up. Universal is doing better. Silver Dollar City is doing better in some ways. You really have a if nothing else, a notebook there with the ingredients for each item so that way you can check it off and see if it's safe or not. An ability to do something custom to help somebody would be really nice. We have to pack food for my wife a lot of times because too many parks don't think about it. It stinks. <laughs> Number six, how about a variety of rides? Not just coasters, Six Flags Magic Mountain, I'm looking at you. Not just thrill rides, not just kitty rides. Keep a balance. Have a nice mix of the family rides that everybody can do together, dark rides, thrill rides, coasters for big and small, water rides. Keep a nice balance and spread it around. Don't just do the kitty prison, I mean area of the park. I remember as a parent, I hated the fact that when I took my kids to the park, too often we were stuck in one spot. And I wanted to go do other stuff, and it would have been nice to take the kids and not have to have them just sit there bored out of their mind while Dad's riding coasters. Yes, we still did that, but we, we'd split time. But it was nice when a park would actually spread the things around so the adults could be doing something while the kids had something right nearby as well. In that way, they're not just sitting on the bench waiting for parents, or the parent is stuck sitting on the bench spread it around and remember everybody. I just don't understand these parks that are so one dimensional. You shut out huge sections of uh, visitors doing that. Lastly, take care of your parks. The number of parks I see that delay maintenance and upkeep boggles my mind. Let me show you some pictures of Magic Mountain because this is a perfect example that for years they just let the condition of the park slide. And you can see it still on Samurai Summit. The buildings look terrible. Now, thank goodness they finally got some new management that went, oh, maybe we need to take care of what we got. And they're painting and refreshing and fixing, and you can see it all over the park. 
you can see the places that have been refreshed and it needed it. But you can see how far it got to. And it costs more to do that than if you'd just taken care of it in the first place. I imagine some of those buildings in Samurai Summit, they're going to have to tear down because they're just so bad. This is a common thing that management goes, oh, we got to save money. Let's pinch pennies. Where's the first thing we cut? Maintenance and upkeep and staffing. And and over, over the years, this has inevitably led to bad things. Disneyland is a good example. Back in the 80s, you had a couple of terrible instances because they were cutting back on maintenance and upkeep. Yeah, bad stuff happened. And unfortunately, the current management hasn't seemed to figure this out. Uh, they actually have are starting to cut back again. Walt Disney World, really, I love Disney, but Walt Disney World actually showed some real issues here in their new area of all things. Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, you've got in the one store, it was Doc Ondar, isn't working. On Rise of the Resistance, the brand new ride, and the Calamari uh, pilot of your shuttle wasn't working. The guns that shoot on the deck weren't working. This is a brand flipping new ride. Why is this stuff not working and not being taken care of? And just little things. Animatronics on It's a Small World. Several of them. Hey, come on, guys. It's staffing shortages and not paying. And it's going you can already see it happening in the parks walt ran his parks in such a way that if there was a flake of paint gone it was going to be painted overnight and fixed the next day there were no such thing as burned out bulbs because if it wasn't changed the next day walt was going to have a fit and the current management doesn't seem to care it it's really it's frustrating and you see the parks that spend the time to take care of everything and keep it up, and then you see those that don't. It's hard to see when you see a park that's not taking care of what, what it should, what it could. Um, and then, like I said, it, it costs more money. Deferred maintenance, <laughs> I'm finding this out on my house, that the things that they didn't fix and deal with back before because it would have been cheaper, it's costing me more money now. And it's the same thing with the parks. If you keep putting it off, oh, we can't afford it. We can't afford it. Uh, okay, a $10,000 fix turns into a $100,000 fix later. Not cool. So think about that, guys. You think you can't afford it? You can't afford to wait. Take care of your stuff. It's going to affect the experiences, the look. And you're eventually going to start losing people because they don't want to go to a place that looks run down and doesn't work. So there's... Seven things, I think, that help make a park great, that all parks should do, that parks should pay attention to, that will make all of them better. Uh, would you add to my list? I'd love to hear. Do you agree? Disagree? Give me your feedback. I'd love to hear it in the comments. Don't forget to check the comments, too. There's a ton of information there. Just go check them. Thank you as well to my financial supporters, uh, people who make trips like the D23 Expo coming up possible. If you want to know more about that and the perks, again, check the description. Thank you so much for watching. God bless. But for me, the ideal park would have all six of these in some form. It, maybe, uh, okay, that's awkward. So I was thinking about my series that I had done on... So the first thing I think that a theme park or amusement park should do that would help make it great is to be... Yeah. Yeah. So the first thing on my list of six, oh my goodness. Somebody yelling. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to know about contact information, fan pages, merchandise, and more, please be sure to check the description below. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to know when I have new ones, well, make sure you hit that subscribe button right up there. And if you want to see another one of my videos, well, I've got a great one for you right here. And a huge thank you to these wonderful people here who support me on Patreon and with YouTube memberships. 
They get behind the scenes information, special perks, and more. If you'd like to know more about that, well, make sure you check that button right there. Thank you so much.